I got the partial update working. Not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. Hey everybody, welcome to today's update on daily IoT. So, in the last episode I talked about how I didn't think the partial update was gonna be very difficult to implement. I just have to, to program that piece of it. I don't think it should be too hard, fingers crossed. Well, that turned out not to be true at all. So that thing has been driving me nuts for several days working on it and learned a ton about the display through this process. So I thought using some of the manufacturer source code that uh, all I had to do was change a couple of calls that, were, uh, calls that were different than the full update, change the lookup table for the waveform that activates all the transistors and the gates and stuff, and everything would have worked. That is not how it went at all. So I learned about this thing called, I don't know if it's called backup RAM or something. Anyway, when you write to the screen, it writes into RAM. When you write again, it takes what you wrote, puts it into some other portion of RAM, like the historical RAM and writes new RAM. And if you don't have all these things synced and working properly, you get some crazy weird behavior on the screen, mostly just garbage, just like a whole bunch of pixels in no particular order. And ah, it was just, it was a real bear to get through. I found a couple of errors in my code, but it was just, this is how projects go sometimes. You get deep, deep down into them. But we are at a point now where I have partial update. Um, right now it's just displaying dummy data where the stats used to be on the display, but all my custom code written, ready to go. We've got display back to where it was. I'm going to say that this is feature parity with the uh, GPL library that I was using before that I wrote from scratch using the data sheet and the manufacturer source code. And so um, I think we're in a good spot there. Now I'm moving on to things like uh, how are we going to talk to the web? Well, I was using uh, an HTTP library, which as luck would have it, was also a GPL library. Refer to the previous episode of why I will not be using that in my code. And so I'm looking at now, uh, I've done actually quite a bit of um, HTTP level firmware stuff back on old PIC microcontrollers. So I feel like I have a pretty good grasp about how the simple HTTP protocol works and how to implement it, especially with the particle photon, which we're using right now with the project. Uh, there's some sample about how to use their TCP client. And so that's where we're at. We're just, we're building up the firmware piece by piece. And I feel like every time I say this, it never happens, but I feel like we're probably only about a week out from where this will be doing what I expected to do as far as fetching stats for a player. We're going to start with flurry, but we're going to branch out from there um, to be able to display on the screen. And that is Again, kind of where the project was, but now we're in product mode where I own all the code, I don't have to release source code and things like that um, because of GPL licensing and things of that nature. And we can start to polish this even more. Um, again, when I'm gonna hand this to somebody that pays me money, uh, it needs to work perfectly all the time uh, without any problems. And so uh, it's really just gonna be uh, iterating through that process of, you know, what are, what, what's the unboxing experience look like and how do you set this thing up and all those things that you need to consider um, rather than just plugging it in and doing some command line stuff to configure it. You gotta, I'm, I'm starting to think about that process of, of putting that extra layer of polish on the project. And so that is the update, partial update on the screen is working. So we're really good in the screen sense of the project. And now we're just gonna start building the other pieces onto it to hopefully bring this thing together in a full blown product. So that's it. I appreciate everybody watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time.